Hello to you. Welcome. Bienvenidos a Adelante Chicago. I'm Lourdes Duarte. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let's begin with a case that has captured the attention of so many people here in Chicago and around the country. Less than two weeks ago, the Civilian Office of Police Accountability released that video right there. Of the night, 13-year-old Adam Toledo was shot and killed in Little Village. The case has generated questions on whether Toledo was holding a gun at the time that he was shot and what was he doing the night of that shooting? While there are many different views on the story, one thing is certain. How does his story help bring light to the lives of so many of our youth in Little Village and the communities throughout Chicago? Joining us now to have this discussion, Paulino Vargas and Luis Baena. They are street outreach mentors for new life centers in Little Village. I want to welcome the both of you. So glad that you decided to be a part of this discussion. We appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Okay, I want to begin with how the community is really doing at this point, how they're holding up after the death of this young man, just 13 years old, Adam Toledo. How's everyone doing? I would say everybody's still distraught, right? Because, I mean, he was 13, so this could happen to anybody's child. And I think that is scaring the community, right? I mean, guys have to look out for, as they say, the ops, but now they also have to watch out for the cops. So. Definitely uneasiness, definitely people scared um, and heartbroken. I mean, we lost a 13-year-old boy whose future was right. I know everybody wants to say the opposite, but we will never know. Yeah, we will never know. Um, as you look at that video and you look at everything that has happened um, since it was released, do you start to come up with ideas of, okay, how do we make things better? How do we make sure that kids like uh, Adam Toledo, kids who are, you know, 12, 13 years old, even younger than that in some points, um, can have sort of a bright future and can go out on the street and play out on the street without being scared that something's going to happen or that they're going to be attracted by uh, gangs to sort of a violent lifestyle. What, what do you think comes out of this? I think definitely continuing uh, to do what, you know, we have been doing for the past years that we've been employed with New Life. Um, and that is, <clears throat> that is continue to provide services and resources to our youth through uh, mentoring, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, group mentoring, uh, programming, uh, and just continue to walk life with our, our, young, our young adults and just continue to meet them where they're at and just provide prayer and, and support whenever whenever is needed. Okay. And talk about New Life Centers and how you're able to help. When you say one-on-one -on -one outreach, talk to me about an average day for you guys um, as you as you work with the kids in, in Little Village. Well, it's, it's pretty difficult to kind of explain because you never get the, you never get the, it's not a consistent routine or a consistent schedule, uh, depending on, you know, the, depending on the community, how, um, whether, whether or not the community is hot with like, con like violence. Um, but usually what we try to do is connect with, with youth who already are, are participants and just check in with them and see what they're doing for the day and, and just, you know, uh, reach out to them. Uh, we do have weekly programming, um, and so we, we make sure that we plan uh, different things for the youth to do and participate in. I know it's been a little bit difficult with COVID, but we, we're managing right now uh, despite that. Yeah, no, I think you brought up an interesting point because I feel like with, well, I think everybody would say that with COVID, everything is tougher these days, whether it's wanting to volunteer or do nonprofit work or just your everyday business. How do you think that has impacted what you guys do out on the street? Do you feel like there's enough resources out there right now during this, this pandemic to help some of the kids living in our communities? Definitely not. I would say there isn't. I mean, we know that CPD gets a ton of money, right? And obviously it's not working, but nonprofits like us and our partners, we don't get the same support, right? So it makes it very difficult to, to provide services where they're needed. We, we do the best we can with what we have, but honestly, there's no way that we can reach everybody here in Little Village as much as we want, just because the resources aren't there, right? There's no jobs here. I mean, we had to open up a food pantry just to help families here eat, right? And that's I mean, food is not a privilege. It's, it's a right for everybody. So why, why are we struggling to eat? Why do our people have to pay somebody a raitero to take them all the way to Bolingbrook to make $10 an hour, right? Like it's, the resources are sorely lacking here. I mean, it's just a reality. That's why we have Adam Toledo and other kids like him because 
parents have to be at work, so they don't have, I mean, they don't have a choice, yeah. right? Like you have to leave your son with the older brother or the sibling or in, in most cases with us. Um, so yeah, sources are severely lacking in our community and other communities like ours, right? Back of the yard, Bryant Park, um, North Lawndale, so we just, it's, yeah, we, we're severely lacking in a lot of ways yeah. out here. And that's been an existing issue for years and years, and the pandemic has only magnified that issue even more because we see so many of the parents right now struggling, struggling to, one, keep their jobs and struggling to stay healthy, right? Um, do you, do you see more dollars now beginning to go into those communities? I know that it takes time, but do you see sort of a light at the end of the tunnel? Are things a little bit improving? Um, it, I mean, honestly, we hear about money that's coming to us, but I don't know if we've seen it or not. Um, it, it's hard for us. We're, we're the guys on the street. We're, you know, the foot soldiers, so we don't. We don't have that information. It, it has things gotten a little better. They were getting, but like you said, right, COVID hit, and then all of a sudden everything just stopped. Yeah. So now we have to pick steam back up to where we were, right, and, and get back to all of that. So we're hoping that, you know, we hear what the mayor is saying um, and how she wants to support. So now we're watching and waiting, right? Like we have to keep pressure on them and other politicians, especially those that come from our community, who our people have put in office. So they they now have to stand up for us and help these kids out, or else. It won't be long before we have another tragedy because, I mean, like I said, there's, there's very, very little resources in our community. So we definitely need as much. Like I said, all communities need as much help as they can get. Yeah. Um, talk about what the average person, let's say me, who may want to help or somebody watching at home who um, has seen this case and sees what's going on in many of our neighborhoods and says, okay, I, I've got to step up and I've got to do something. Give us uh, a real, a realistic plan of help, a plan of attack. What can they do? Real, realistic plan? It, that depends on everybody, right? We're just getting, <laughs> yeah. like, I would say, you know, sign up to be a volunteer mentor. A lot of these kids don't have a father in the picture, older siblings. They need somebody who can walk with them and, and show them a different path, right? That would be, to me, is, I don't want to say the easiest, but it's, it's usually the most realistic for people, right? Because financially, we can ask you for donations, you know, and if you got it, that's great. But we're also in a time where people are struggling. Mm -hmm. So we know people don't have money like that. So honestly, your time is more valuable than anything to mm -hmm. these young women of our community. They need somebody to speak to who can show them a different path, you know? So honestly, I think to me, that would be the biggest thing. Realistically, sign up, man. Even if you just want to come to our food pantry and volunteer to hand out food in the mornings, that would help us tremendously. But on a bigger picture, volunteer to, to be a mentor to one of these young men and women and, and just be a part of their life, get to know them and understand what they go through out here. Learn from their struggles before we, uh, we're kicked to judge, like not understanding what these kids go through. Do you feel like the kids are receptive to having mentors from different communities um, to guide them along the way? Because I, I think sometimes, too, that's difficult. The kids maybe don't feel like they can connect with someone from the north side who's coming into their neighborhood um, to mentor them and steer them in the right direction. What, how do you think that that works? Hmm. I think it's I think it's possible. Um, it just depends on your character and how you present yourself. And I, I mean, I encourage, you know, outsiders to be themselves 100% of the time because, you know, in our community, that's what we value. You know, we don't, we don't like the fakeness, you know, and, and a lot of the youth can, can read you too and will and we'll tell you. Um, so I think our youth are open to it. Um, at first, you know, it'll be a little bit of a challenge, but if you stay consistent and you stay positive throughout and, and you remain yourself throughout the whole time, you should be good. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think to touch on that, uh, and don't come with a judgmental attitude. Like, right. come in with open, willing to learn about these young men and our community, and you'll be accepted. Like, we don't we don't want to turn anybody around, but also don't come with a, a preconceived notion of what you're going to run into and what mm -hmm. these kids are like, because then that'll turn them off immediately. Yeah. So it don't. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Newlifecenters.org is a website. If you, as you heard them talk about, want to volunteer at the food pantry, you want to become a mentor, that's one way to do it. So there it is, uh, the address on your screen, newlifecenters.org. We appreciate your time, Paulino and Luis. Uh, good work out there. Thank you. Okay. And so